Welcome to part two of my how to 3D print series. If you didn't see part one, be sure to go check that out. In that video, I really tried to simplify the computer part of 3D printing, which involves downloading models and putting them in the slicer software. I also discussed different types of materials you can use, and I'll leave the same link in the description of this video as I did in the last one, which will explain what each material is used for and different properties of it. So again, assuming you have watched the first video, welcome to part two, where we're gonna talk about taking that file that we downloaded on this tiny little micro SD card and actually putting this on the printer. So let's go take a look. All right, so this is my Creality CR10 printer that I'm gonna be printing on. Different printers will be set up different ways. Um, it just really depends on what yours looks like. For something like a CR10, you're gonna have your control box separate. Um, this control box has a power switch on the back, which I'll go ahead and flip right now and the spool of plastic sits right on the control box. However, some other printers have the control box built into the base of the printer. For example, this Annette printer over here, um, this whole base, obviously it looks a little more chunky than this guy. The controls and power supply, everything is built right into the bottom of this printer. So if you were to turn this on, you'd be using the touch screen over here just to be able to control it. Then your spool of plastic sits up here and then feeds right in. So some do work that way. However, we're gonna be working with the CR10. So we're gonna be working with a separate control box and then the printer unit separate. Just to give you an idea of how this works. So you plug the SD card into this control box based on the code that's on the SD card that we got from the slicer software, right? It'll tell each of these stepper motors where to move and when. It'll tell the one on the X axis to move this way, the Y axis to move this way, and the Z axis up and down. Right now the stepper motors are disabled, which is why I'm able to actually move things. And finally the other motor drives the extruder. And just to show you what the extruder is, this stepper motor right here that's being controlled controls this gear. And when this gear turns, it pulls more and more plastic into the printer. As the plastic is extruded in, it goes up through this Bowden tube and into this nozzle. So you can see the nozzle peeking out a little bit right there. But what happens is the plastic comes in through this Bowden tube and into the hot end. And it gets heated up in the hot end, so much so that it's pushed out of the nozzle and is able to be printed with. So it's basically just a bunch of stepper motors that work together to move the bed this way, move the nozzle this way, push the plastic through, and that's really all it is. And the code on this SD card will tell it when to move and where. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a ton of wires back here going from the control box to the printer itself. And if you put one together, it has pretty clear instructions on where to plug everything in. And you'll see that each of these stepper motors has a cable running to it. And that's how each of them get a signal of when to move and where. So now comes the question of, well, okay, I know what it is now, how do I use it? Each printer is gonna be different. Some are more fancy and they have more bells and whistles and others don't. This is a CR10, it's a lot more bare bones which will be a lot easier to teach people with because if you know how to use one that's just bare bones without all the bells and whistles then you'll be able to use pretty much anything. So you know how it works, you know how each of the stepper motors gets a signal. Not saying you have to understand that in order to 3D print but just in case you wanted to know how it works. So now you say ah but how do I use the printer? Well first of all something that's going to be pretty dang important is having the bed level. So we need this bed to be flat and how do you do that you may ask. Well a lot of printers have an auto leveling feature and if you want to use that I recommend looking up a tutorial for your specific printer because a lot of them are different. However, I'm just going to teach you the manual way which should work on pretty much any printer. Number one, if you have printed something previously I would recommend cleaning off the bed. For me I use the glue stick method a lot so um, obviously my bed has a lot of smudges on it but all I'm going to do is either take a wet paper towel or I'll wet a paper towel with isopropyl alcohol to get it really clean and I'll just take it and I'll go across any remainder gunk, glue, or just whatever I've been using to adhere things to the bed. Once it's wet, I can take this scraper, just kind of wipe off any of this gunk, and there we go. It's really not too bad. It's not 100% necessary for leveling, but you want to do it at some point before your print, so I would recommend doing that. So to level it the first time, this is what we're going to do. Number one, I'd probably make sure you haven't started to heat up the nozzle yet. We're going to be using paper doing this, and we don't need things to catch on fire. But first, we're going to auto-home this so we're at what the printer considers to be zero height. This will be different on different printers, but if you have a Creality machine or CR10 or something like it, you'll go to prepare and then auto home. And once I hit that, it'll go to the home position for all three stepper motors, which for the X is all the way to the left, for the Y is all the way to the front, and then for the Z, all the way when it hits the bottom. So now to make sure everything's level, I'm gonna make sure this is at the same height in all four corners and in the center of the glass. And you can move it around in one of two ways. One, you can disable the stepper motors so you can just pull things and move them. Is that good to do? I don't know, I do it. Or there's typically the option on your printer to activate each stepper motor. That way you can move it from the control box. However, I'm I'm just gonna do it the way I've always done it. So I'm gonna go to prepare and then scroll down to disable steppers. Now, 
I can move this around freely. So I'm gonna move the nozzle over here to the first corner. So we're gonna take this piece of paper, we're gonna put it right under the nozzle, and we're gonna wanna adjust the height of this bed by means of this knob down here, such that there's a little bit of friction, and you want enough to be able to tug on it and be able to move it. You don't want it to be super hard, but you also just don't want it to move around freely. So on each of these knobs, and there's one on each corner, it should tell you which way to turn the knob in order to bring the bed up or to bring it down. So since this piece of paper is loose, we wanna bring the bed up. So I'm gonna rotate this knob until I I feel a little bit of friction in between the nozzle and the bed. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit more. When I pull it, it has a good bit of friction underneath there, but I'm still able to pull the piece of paper out without it ripping. Once I do that, I know this part of the bed over here is level. Then I'm gonna take the bed and move it forward so that it's in the back left corner of the printer. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna lower it if it needs to be lowered, raise it if it needs to be raised. Once I do that, then I'll take the end of the printer and I'll shove it over to this side to do this corner. And I'll do that for all four corners. Finally, just to make sure you're glass isn't warped, because sometimes it can be, I'll go ahead and I'll place it right back in the middle. And just to make sure the glass isn't warped or anything, I'll do the same thing. Granted, there's not a knob underneath there for me to try, and it's pretty good in the middle, so it should be good. Okay, so now your bed is level. Now it's time to actually get the printer working. First step is to actually load the plastic on the printer. So basically we're gonna set it on this spool holder and run it through the extruder and down to the nozzle. Before we do that, we wanna lift this up a little bit just so we're not pushing plastic through directly on the plate since we leveled it. The stepper motors are off, so I'm just gonna push it up a little bit, or you can use your control box to move it up. So before we start running the plastic through this, we need to heat up the nozzle. Now every machine is different, but I'm gonna show you how I do it on this one. So this is the screen of my CR10. Basically, it just tells me what the current temperature of the nozzle and the bed are. And right now I haven't input a temperature to turn them to, so it's just zero up top. This is your fan speed over here, or at what percentage it's running. And these X, Y, and Z coordinates are just where your nozzle is at at that specific point in time. We haven't started a print, so everything is zero. And this little bar will fill up along with the progress of your print. So just to give you a rundown of the screen, but we're gonna click right here, we're gonna hit prepare. There's two ways to do this. You can either go to prepare and there'll probably be an option, something like preheat PLA, and you can click that. Or if you wanna set in a manual temperature, you can go down to control, hit temperature, and here you can input manually the temperature of the nozzle and the bed. I'm gonna go ahead and put about 210 since that's what we're printing at. I'm gonna hit enter. You can see it start to heat up right here. Okay, so our nozzle is now heated up. It says 210 on the screen. We're gonna go ahead and take our roll of PLA. I've already opened this one, but if you have a new one, go ahead and open it. And we're gonna set the spool on this spool holder, making sure, okay, if it is a separate control box, that this is not gonna get in the way of this. Because as it prints up, this whole bar is gonna be moving up. And if we have our spool sitting too close, that's gonna interfere. So just be sure to pull it back in a way, however far it needs to be. And then we're gonna put this in through the extruder. All right, so here's my dusty extruder. As you can see, there's a spring right here. And when I push this together, it's gonna allow enough room just for this piece of filament to be able to run in between that gear and that disc. So there's a hole for the filament to run through on the other side of this piece of plastic. So I'm gonna push this together, run it through the hole. It should go in between that gear and the disc, and I'll keep pushing it through. Obviously, as soon as I let go of this, I can't push it through anymore. So we have to release the tension there to be able to completely push this through. If for some reason you're having trouble getting the filament to go from here up through this little Bowden tube right here, you can actually go ahead and take this fitting off, run it through separately, and then tighten it back on. I've had that happen to me a couple of times. So as we continue to push this filament through, you'll eventually see it start to come out of the nozzle. Once it's easily flowing out, you know it's all the way in. You can kind of pick this off too. And there you go, you have your filament loaded. Something else that we want to pay attention to is bed adhesion method. Now in my last video, I mentioned something called the glue stick method. This is what I've always used, and I don't think it's failed me even once. So if you want to do this, go for it. If you want to use something else, you can. All these are just extra precautions to make sure things really stick to the bed. Technically, you don't really have to do anything if you're using a heated bed, but it really helps to do something. Some of my friends I know take blue tape and they put it across the bed and print on top of that. That apparently works very well. For me, I buy the cheapest glue stick that money can buy. And on top of the glass bed, it's important, it has to be the glass bed, it can't be on the metal itself. I'll take a glue stick and go over exactly where the part's about to be printed. It doesn't have to be thick, but it really just helps things stick to the bed. It can be any type of washable glue stick. I typically get either the Elmer's ones or the Crazy Art ones just because these are super cheap. But that's literally all I do. And then when the print's done, I'll do what I showed you guys before. Take a wet paper towel, wipe it off, and then scrape off the excess glue. For bed adhesion, if you're doing what I'm doing, that's all you gotta do. Now, finally, we're gonna go ahead and stick the SD card in. 
and hit print. So for this printer, the SD card insert is on this side. Make sure it's the right way up. Don't force it in because you could have it flip. For a CR10, you have to have it upside down and place it in. Should click in. So for this guy, I'm gonna click, go to print from SD. You'll see I just put the SD card in, so it hasn't really registered yet, but I'll hit refresh and everything pops up. I'm gonna scroll down until I find my file, Among Us Guy, that's what we downloaded on the SD card. I'm gonna hit go. And once you hit go, your printer will start to home itself out. Also, when it comes down, make sure these cords don't get caught in between these limit switches here. I've had that happen a couple of times too. And we'll move on over to the middle and start printing. Now, one thing that you wanna do is while it's printing, look and see what the first layer looks like. If the first layer looks flat, there's not really any large ridges in it, then it's probably fine. Because obviously if the filament goes down on the bed and you're able to say move it with your finger, that means that the nozzle is not close enough to the bed. It's just extruding above it and it's not actually sticking to it. If that's the case, you're going to want to twist the knobs below here just to bring the bed up in whatever area that's happening in. On the other hand, if the nozzle is on the bed and it's actually not extruding anything, there's a good chance the bed might be too high and not allowing any plastic to come out. In that case, wherever that's happening, you should turn the knobs and pull the bed down. So it is really important to watch that first layer just to make tweaks and make sure everything's level. After the first layer, you probably don't really want to touch anything. Printer's already got its rhythm going, and tweaking anything after the first layer may really jack it up. Just some other things to know. Most printers have the option to pause print, stop prints, if you were to see something wrong that needed to be fixed. If you were to run out of filament during the print and need to add more, a lot of people will just cut the line of filament right there and feed in another roll directly after it into the extruder. That's something you can do. And if you were to really feel gutsy, you can even speed up the print. On a CR10, if I were to twist this knob on the home screen, it would actually speed up the printing process. So if I do this, you'll slowly see the printer start to work a little harder. However, I'm going to bring it back down to 100% just to make sure everything works all right. So now we're going to let it finish. All right, so this guy's done. Your printer should automatically start cooling off and we'll take our scraper and just kind of scrape underneath the brim to take this guy off. You can see the supports here that held up his backpack already broke off. Um, we can go ahead and take the brim off of this guy. Now I'm gonna take these guys right here and just kind of clean up his feet a little bit. And there we go, there he is. This by the way is a Polyterra PLA from Polymaker turned out pretty well. Now, once your printer's cooled down, all you have to do is just shut it off. All right, so that's how you 3D print. Hopefully this simplified things. Hopefully it also showed you that pretty much anyone can do this. By the way, if you did see last week's video, hopefully you remember me showing you guys things.com. Things is a website where you can download 3D models for free, upload your own, or you can upload some to find ones that look similar. And if you guys are interested in downloading any STL files that I create myself in the future, my profile will be down below as well. I'm in the process of making Captain America's shield and I have a model that I designed myself uploaded on things. If you guys want to download it as well for free, the link will be down below. So thank you, thanks for sponsoring this video. Hopefully you guys will go check them out. Hopefully this video series helped you. I really hope it did. If these videos helped you, please be sure to share them with someone who thinks they can't 3D print for some reason, because I really want everyone to know that it's not that hard. Yeah, so I appreciate you guys for watching this and hopefully it helped.